hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to integrate web view uh, for android in gado game engine so we will be creating an android plugin to integrate web view inside your gado game app or engine so let's see the output first so here i have one button so this is a gado screen or scene and here i have one button which is from gado as well now if i click on it it will open a new screen uh, which uh, displays uh, our uh, like the gado website inside a web view so this is a web view now here instead of the gado website you can pass whatever you feel like but as i was saying and if i press the back button it redirects me to the uh, previous screen if i click on click me again here you can see it has opened again so yeah that's what we will be looking into let's get started so firstly uh, by following the gado documentation i have created one cheat sheet so that i can easily explain it to you all the steps also at the time of uh, recording this video i am using gado 4.2.2 but uh, if you are watching this in the future uh, whatever is the latest version you can use that i don't think there will be any big changes as such so first what you will have to do open android studio and you will have to create an android project it can be an empty views project it can be a jetpack or empty compose project create a project doesn't really matter uh, once you create the project uh, and once the gradle syncing is done uh, you will see something like this your app and gradle scripts then you will have to right click on your app select new uh, module select android library and you can give it whatever name you want i have given it as my library as you can see i have already created this that's why it is not allowing me to create again but you can give it whatever name you want uh, change the package name to whatever you feel is correct and then just click on finish once you click on finish again the gradle sync might take a little bit of time and finally you will see a folder like this uh, so the next step is you will have to open gradle scripts and here you will see build.gradle.kts of your library click on that and firstly uh, at the time of uh, me recording this video uh, i am using a newer version of android studio that's why uh, you are not able to see the gado uh, android plugin version over here uh, we use something called uh, version catalog so here you will have to add implementation libs.gado and inside uh, this version catalog libs.versions.toml here you can see i have added gado 4.2.2 stable now in sh uh, if you are using higher version of gado make sure you change this version you can find this exact version on maven central as well so change this version to whatever gado ver gado engines version you are using and make sure you add stable as well because i think that is part of the version number and then you will also have to add this bit of code so this actually refers to the org.gadoengine.gado and this is the reference uh, version number so once you do that you will see a sync now button at the over here so just click on that sync now button it will download all the dependencies for you all right so is there anything else uh, no that's it then uh, let's see what the documentation says so next we will have to create a file called gado android plugin so you have to go to your library go to kotlin plus java go over here and here you will have to create a file called gado android plugin so these are all the imports so if you want you can just copy paste this import so it is extending from our gado plugin the plugin name i have given it as my plugin uh, but you can change it to whatever you feel like but do remember this name because we will be using this in lot other places as well i am not making use of signal because for this it doesn't make any sense for me to use signals but if you want you can use signals as well so you can just uncomment this code and here you can see it is a test signal a signal of name test signal and the data which we are passing is string data so if you want to pass any kind of data back to gado side you can just on comment this code out as well so wherever you call this emit signal it will send that uh, data back to gado side so but i'm not really using it so i'm not using so i have commented it out and here i have defined one method called open url uh, which uh, needs to be uh, called uh, from the gado side as well so uh, this open url method takes one url as well of type string okay so as you can see over here i have defined a method called open url which have to be called from our gado side that's why i have annotated with at the rate used by gado it takes a url which we can send it from the gado side and then we just call this webview activity which we have to create so once 
if you want to move from one screen to another screen in native android application you make use of intent so we will be uh, redirecting to web view activity and here we are passing whatever url we get to web view activity and we are just starting the activity now how to create this web view activity all you have to do is just right click new activity select empty views activity and here you can give it name as web view activity i have already i already have this so i'm not sure if so android as you can see android should is not letting me uh, create it and this should be activity underscore web underscore view so for you you can just click on finish i already have it that's why android studio is not letting me create it uh, okay then just click on finish again it will take little bit of time for gradle syncing just be patient now before we come to web view activity so i'll just minimize this i'll close this as well so go to res layout activity underscore web view dot xml and here you can see we are creating a web view uh, inside our so this layout file is uh, automatically linked to this web view activity so this is how you, uh, like in traditional android uh, uh, ui uh, you create this kind of xml layouts but now there is something called jetpack compose as well which i don't want to go into uh, so here you can create a web view and here you can see i have attached an id of main uh, by default you might see something called constraint layout or a uh, linear layout or relative layout just remove that and uh, use something like this okay and once you add this code go to your web view activity uh, and here also these are all the imports so if you want you can just copy paste all these imports so here we are first getting hold of our web view uh, then uh, we so here as you can see it is this code by default should be present inside your activity if you are using latest android version and here you can see that uh, we are just initializing our web view now i am using the same id which i had defined it inside activity underscore main uh, activity underscore web underscore view sorry so this the id is main make sure you use the same id over here as well otherwise you might face a crash now again this bit of code is also by default present here you might be seeing something called r.id.main but instead of that given that our web views id is also the same thing here you can directly replace web view maybe android studio might remove this code later on in the future i don't know but this is not really important code okay and then uh, here i'm just displaying a toast message if you don't want to display the toast message you can remove it as well and once we get the url I'm just calling webview.load URL and here we are passing that particular URL which we get from our intent. So that's it on webview activity. Next you, uh, you will have to go to manifest android manifest.xml and here uh, I'm calling this internet permission. Okay, uh, so because we require this for displaying that particular website in a webview, we require internet permission then uh, I have, we have to create this application tag and given that we are using this creating a new activity it requires a particular theme as well so you can just copy paste this theme don't worry too much about it if you don't write this theme you will get a crash so it's better you uh, use this particular theme uh, then uh, this particular uh, activity code you might be seeing by default because when you create a web activity android studio automatically adds this particular bit of code if you are not seeing it make sure you write it and this i have just copied it from the godot documentation here you will have to make few changes so this my plugin should be your own plugin name so in case if you forgot you can go to godot android plugin and this is your plugin name and here this should be your own package name again in case if you forgot you can find your package name over here so this is your package name followed by dot godo android plugin so the whatever is the file name okay so this also i have done let's see what's the next step uh, then uh, okay so we'll have to go to the project drop down from over here then open your my library and whatever name you have given create a folder called export scripts template inside that uh, then inside that first create a file called plugin.cfg if you are finding it difficult to create it from android studio you can create it from your files app as well or file explorer whatever it is and here you or use vs code to create this file and then copy paste it inside your android library so again i have just copy pasted this code from the godot documentation important thing is this should be your plugin name 
change the description author to whatever you feel like then we have to create this export underscore plugin dot jd file so that's what i have created again this has been copied from docs so you can just copy paste it only two things you have to change this should be your plugin name and here you can see we have to write this extra bit of code called get android dependency as well the reason is uh, we because we have created we are using this uh, web view activity uh, we had created this web view activity so sorry this one so it requires some extra bit of dependency as well so i'll tell you what dependencies are first is the android x app compat now uh, this uh, version again might be little different by the time you watch this video so in case if you don't know what is the latest version there are two tricks for it so first you can go to your build.gradle.kts no no not sorry so just first go to your android drop down this makes easy to find everything go to libs.versions.toml and here you can see whatever is the app compact version 1.7.0 that's what i am using over here as well android x dot at com app compact 1.7 then we require this activity as well again i think same uh, activity here you can see it is 1.9.0 i think a newer version is available this is a minor version so it's fine so here you can see this is the activity version so again make sure you change this particular version if it is different and last is this material as well i think that is is that present 1.12.0 yes material is also present 1.12 so check whatever is the version inside your libs.versions.toml make sure you use the same thing over here as well so this is for a debug and this is for release everything is same for release as well so once you do all this stuff next what you have to do is you will have to open your terminal cd to your android project wherever you have created not to your android library but to your root of your android project and then you will have to create okay so here you can see this is the root of my android project so this is how my android project looks like so you will have to go to this root of your android project inside your terminal and then you will have to run uh, this particular command dot slash gradle w assemble if everything is correct in your code uh, once this uh, command is finished running you will have to go to your library build outputs ar and here you should see two ar files being generated i have cut pasted that files to my gado project that's why you are not seeing it over here but you should see two ar files being generated okay once that is done uh, that's it for the android studio part next you will have to create a gado project firstly you will have to go to project click on install android build template i have already done that this might take little bit of time if you are doing it for the very first time then you will have to click on export add add android i have already added it here you might see a fix import error red color error with a fix import button just click on it i have already clicked it then check this use gradle build check this uh, architecture of android device uh, which you are running on uh, if you don't know the architecture select all four of this uh, then uh, you will have to create a folder called add-ons inside that create a folder called folder with your plugin name so my plugin name is just my plugin inside that folder click create a folder called bin and inside bin you will have to create two folders debug and release okay now inside your plugin folder you will have to copy these two files export plugin.gd uh, which we uh, created uh, inside our android studio so this copy this over here export plugin under then plugin.cfg as well you will have to copy so i have copied these two files then inside bin so you won't be able to see this inside uh, gado so i'll show it from file explorer so you so if you remember we had these two files right over inside our ar folder so you will have to copy the debug ar file to the debug folder and release ar file to the release folder so i'll show you i have already copied it but you will have to change the name a little bit so here you can see the debug file has been copied to the debug folder now you will have to change the name to whatever is your plugin name dash debug dot ar similarly for release as well it should be whatever is your plugin name dash release dot ar 
once that is done you can go to project project settings go to plugins and make sure you check this checkbox you should be able to see your plugin now in case if you are not able to see it maybe you made some mistake over here or some mistake inside export plugin.jd file uh, gado will be kind enough to show you some errors in case if there is any error in indentation then here i have debug i have release uh, i have done this as well then here as you can see i have created one scene uh, as a node 2d and it has one button inside it and i have attached one script uh, to it as well so this is the script so here uh, this should be your plugin name and here inside on ready we are just initializing our plugin if you are connecting some signal as well then you can just comment this out change this to your signal name and then you will have to create a method called on test signal which takes uh, some data as an input and then you will have to typecast it to string as well but i'm not really doing that so yeah and on button press so i have attached this uh, button press signal as you can see to our script and on button press i'm just copying this open calling this open url method and passing this particular url so you can change this url to whatever you feel like all right uh, there is if you are doing also if you are doing this for first time you might have to go to editor editor settings add your debug key as well as android hdk path android hdk path you can get it from android studio debug key for mac users it is mostly on this particular uh, location uh, this one uh, but for windows i'm not really sure you might have to google it also there is one more issue a lot of people faces for godo 4.2.2 that uh, java is not able to find that it is not able to find java so for me this was the path you will have to change it to whatever you, your path is or if you want to know more you can visit this particular issue as well so yeah i think uh, that should be it let me quickly check uh, values string short xml yeah i think that should be it if you have any question do let me know in the comments uh, thank you for watching bye